theme of our new series, the idea is that there is a world out there, it is a fallen world, it is a, um, a world that uh, often is in serious trouble, and it is a world that needs energizing, it needs change, it needs positive influence, it needs the Lord. And we are called to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, along with Christ. And so the, the series that we're going to have for a few weeks has to do then with the fact that I need to be that kind of impact, that kind of, that kind of influence on the world around me. And that does mean that I may have to give up something of myself, something of my uh, possessions, something of my time, uh, as we saw in the video, that, uh, that, that there's a, a need to, to tear off that part of my life in which I am totally self-focused and begin to focus on making some sort of impact on that world around me. That's what we're going to do. And each week there will be a different uh, aspect or a different subtopic to that overall topic, and today it is witness, to be a witness, to be a witness. And, and not, uh, not going to talk this morning uh, about uh, going up to your neighbor and uh, grabbing him by the shoulder and asking him if he's saved, even though that may be a good thing to do. It probably is a good thing to do, or at least in some situations uh, may be a good thing to do. But, uh, uh, but what we're going to do today is talk about witness in its broadest sense, how I, my life, can make a change, make an impact on that world around me. So that's what we're going to do. But I, fir I first want to just kind of back up for a moment and say hi to everybody. You know, we have had a couple of really rough weeks. Whew. I mean, weather-wise. It's been fine around here. We're happy around here. But weather-wise, wow. Last Sunday, uh, and, and I just need to remind everybody, it's in the bulletin. I put it out on Lou's News. There is a new community church in Nuevo. So when it says on the television set, all services of new community church canceled, make sure you look to see if that's Nuevo, which last week it was. Uh, see, we have three new community churches. One, Nuevo, Pastor Clint was pastor there. Uh, and new community church here in Kent County, and also new community church in Ottawa County, in Hudsonville. So if there's bad weather, and, and <laughs> but, but we're done with it, folks. No more. Spring is coming. But make sure you check the county. Okay. But I'm just so glad to, to see everyone. Uh, again, weather-wise, we have had cancellations like I have never seen before because of the weather. Also, the uh, Bible reading cards for March are out. We had them last week, but if you didn't get yours, very welcome to pick one up. And um, I'm happy to report that Pastor Mark is on his way home. He left uh, Hong Kong. That was uh, Dubai on the way over was his, his kind of midway stop. Hong Kong on the way back. He left there at 10 o'clock last night. He is still in the air and will be till about noon. So um, for him. But we're thankful he's had some, some really great, great experiences. Uh, he was in India. Let's uh, dim the lights and I want to show you a couple shots here from India. Uh, he was there. His main purpose in India was to teach the pastors recovery, to teach recovery. And here they are. Here's um, uh, the people with whom he met. You see Mark there. He's on the right. Uh, he's the one without the tan. <laughs> okay. And uh, we Hollanders. Oh, we're such pale faces. Uh, there, that um, is a meeting, uh, and that's some of the people that have come for recovery. And uh, uh, then the next slide is Pastor Mark. Uh, no, hold it. It's first of all the banner. This is the banner that they put out, Community Recovery of India, Deliverance from Bondages, every Saturday. They do theirs on Saturday. And then the next slide is Pastor Mark with PC. PC is the leader there he is a tremendous leader. He has established churches in India, Sri Lanka, and other countries in that area. And uh, it is under his auspices that uh, Mark goes there and that the recovery uh, is being taught to these pastors. Then he went on to Bangladesh. 
We'll have more pictures on that later. But he went on to Bangladesh, and, and exciting, the people of Bangladesh raised their own money to build another worship center. Woo! Wow. That is just great. So, because uh, more and more we're teaching the people, as Christians, you've got to give, you have to tithe, and you have to take care of yourselves. And they are. More and more they're learning that. So, uh, on his way home, he'll be landing in Chicago, uh, noonish, right around in there. And then uh, he'll be flying from there, be coming back into Grand Rapids about 6 o'clock tonight. So really, really, really thankful. Um, the, uh, the lose news said to set your clocks ahead Sunday. That's next Sunday. Not this, somebody asked me if it was this Sunday. No, it's next Sunday. So uh, we set our clocks ahead. We spring ahead. I got my seeds ready to go. Think positive. Think spring. Yay. Two weeks from today is St. Patrick's Day. Hey, lots of good things happening. I want to give a shout out this morning to Kim and Lynn Smith. Kim, this past week, had a stroke. Went to St. Mary's Hospital. They caught it in time. They ministered to him. And he is here this morning. Kim, oh. Well, we'll be uh, including him in prayer and others later, later this morning. But back to witness. Now, witness often has meant something verbal. As I said before, that maybe you grab somebody by the shoulder, ask them if they're saved, have you met Jesus, that kind of thing. And, and for many people, that's a very uncomfortable thing to do. They're, they're really not able to do it. And I'm not necessarily recommending that you do it. If, if you are comfortable doing that, if you have situations where that door is open, wonderful, wonderful, because that is the way that many have been led to the Lord. Yet at the same time, we have to realize that evangelicals, I've said this a couple months ago, say it again, evangelicals are not always appreciated in the United States of America. Now, we are evangelicals. This church is an evangelical church, and what that means is that we are Bible-based, we are Christ-based, Jesus Christ-based, and that one of our primary goals is to bring the love of Jesus to one another and to our community and to the world. That that is a focus. And that, uh, in, a, in a very brief way, it's more involved than that, in a brief way is what it is to be evangelical and what it is to be an evangelical church. But a lot of people in America don't like evangelicals. Part of it is because of some of the hypocrisy that they've seen from TV evangelists, or maybe they've seen from uh, individual church members. Uh, they've had bad experiences, and maybe because there has been that, you know, grabbing by the shoulder and, and in your face, and I'm going to ask you if you love Jesus and so forth. Uh, and so verbal witnessing has its place, it has its time, if that's your gift, if the door is open, for sure. So I don't want to in any way discount that, but what I really want to emphasize this morning is the idea of witness with the life, with one's life. In Acts 1, verse 7, Jesus said not to witness. He said, you are my witnesses. It has to do with life. It has to do with a life style. And as I'm going to say this morning, making a very specific effort to be that impact on the world around me, to be that influence. One of the books that I've been uh, uh, reading in preparation for this morning is a book called The Body by Chuck Colson. Remember Chuck Colson? He has passed away, but uh, remember he was uh, uh, one of the, the leaders in the Nixon administration, and then because of Watergate, he went to prison, became a Christian, and then became one of the most powerful, most dynamic Christian leaders that we have seen, established the whole prison ministry. Uh, and he's written this book called The Body, which the body of Christ, that is the church. And in this book, he, he brings that point out, that witnessing is one's life. He says, what we, uh, excuse me, what you do, what you do emerges from who you are. 
being precedes doing. So I first of all have to establish an identity. And that was uh, what the video was about this morning. That I begin to think about who I am in this world. I establish an identity. And then from that, my life becomes that, that kind of witness that makes an impact on other people. Colson goes on to say, at the core of our Christian witness in the world lies the reality of who each of us is in relationship to God and in relationship to one another. So who I am. And really that's what the Bible teaches. I mentioned Acts 1 where Jesus said you are, not to go out and, and witness to people, but you are my witness. Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 4 when he was calling people like Peter to be his disciples, he said in Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 18, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, and they were cast in a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me. Now notice, follow me. That is, become like I am. You know, walk with me, imitate me, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. The older translation says, I will make you fishers of men. But uh, we want to be politically correct because it's not just men, but it's women also. So the newer NIV says, and I will send you out to be fishers of people. And at once they left their nets and they followed him. So to follow me, says Jesus, to become a, a person that is making that impact. Now Colson goes on to say that the opposite of making that positive Christ-like impact, the opposite could happen. When I don't live that way, but people do know that I go to church and that I claim to be a Christian. He goes on to say, <clears throat> at one extreme are those who say a lot about God, but they don't live it. They don't live it with the same vigor. Their lives lack love. Their lives lack hope. Their lives lack purity. Unfortunately, they are the ones the world looks at as examples of the church. And that's why often the world does not like evangelicals. For example, hypocritical TV evangelists or the worker who sips coffee from a Jesus mug and showers colleagues with Christian platitudes but does the shoddiest work in the office. Or the businessman who prays before every meeting and then cheats his customers. Or the pro-life activist who wears a God loves you button while hurling hateful insults at women entering abortion clinics. For the watching world, it is difficult to separate the message from the messenger. See, there's that idea. You make the impact. The messenger and the message, they become the same thing. The best argument for Christianity is Christians. Their joy, their certainty, their completeness. But the strongest argument against Christianity is also Christians. When they are somber, joyless, when they are self-righteous, smug, narrow, repressive, then Christianity dies a thousand deaths. The Apostle Paul brings this idea of witness being the person who is imitating Christ, brings that out in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. It's a great passage. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, starting at verse 6, the Apostle Paul says, you became imitators of us, and of the Lord, for you welcome the message in the midst of severe suffering with a joy given by the Holy Spirit. And you, uh, you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia, which is the northern part of Greece, but also Achaia, which is the southern part of Greece. Your faith in God has, notice, as, as people... Their faith became known everywhere, and therefore, 
We do not need to say anything. The people became the message. And then the final verse, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Now, let's go back, if you could, Jake, to verse 6. In verse 6 it says you became imitators. I want to talk a little bit about original Greek words here. Original Greek words. The original Greek word here is, is the word that has come into the English language as mimic. To mimic. You mimicked us. And that's quite often the way it is. When a person first begins to show interest in Christianity, they will mimic the people around them who are Christians. And then later as they understand Jesus and the Bible more and more, they come to their own understanding of what it is to mimic Christ. But he says, you mimicked us. Whew. Wow. Wow. See, the, 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 the apostles were the message. They were the message. Not just verbal, but their lives. And then the next verse, uh, 7. You became a model. Now that word model is very interesting. Again, in the, in the original Greek. It is the Greek word tupos from which we get the word type. Now, for those of you below the age of 55, there used to be a thing called a typewriter. And when you hit a key, there was a little arm that went up and it had a letter on it. For example, if I wanted to hit the letter M, then I would hit the M on the keyboard and then this arm with, with a M on it would swing up and slam up against a a ribbon, an ink ribbon, which would make an imprint on the blank page, and you would see the M. Now that's the idea here. You make an impact. See, you are to pause. You type it. You slam into that world and make a positive impact for Christ. That's what witness really, in fact, the word witness. Let's go back to the, to the ancient Greek for that word. You know what that word is in Greek? It is the word martyr. Martyr. When you're reading Greek and you come across the word martyr, you translate it witness. A witness is a martyr. Now, we know what a martyr is. A martyr is one who gives his or her life. You die for Jesus. That's a martyr. Now, we don't have to literally die, but there's this idea of sacrifice. Sacrifice, and that's what the video was about. I sacrifice, maybe money, maybe time. Did you see that thing in the bulletin about kids' food basket? Say, oh man, I'm so busy. I gotta, you know, uh, do this or that. I, I just, well, wait a minute. Martus, martyr, witness. And who knows, but you might be standing in that line, putting some peanut butter sandwiches into those sacks and you get to talking to the person next to you, and they find out about your church, and you say, oh, did you know we have pickleball? And this spring, you can come and do uh, disc uh, hockey, or whatever you call it, out there. Of course, we, we first have to chop down the trees that blew over in the windstorm last week, but... And, and the person says, well, I don't know. He said, I've got this four-year-old. He said, oh! Do we have a preschool? Oh. And see, impact. There comes the key. And it leaves a mark. Witness. And so, realizing that in our nation today, in our nation today, there is, there is a decrease in the amount of knowledge people have of the Bible. There is a decrease in the number of people who believe that the Bible is true. There is an increase in moral relativity. That is, what you think is right is fine for you. I'll do what I think is right for me. And it doesn't really matter because there is no absolute truth. There is no absolute virtue. A, a moral shallowness, a moral vacuum. And then we walk into that world making an impact. 
Now, what, what makes things worse is that we are hugely subjected to the media. And Colson says in his book, he says, a study of 100 leading television and film producers found that only 6% attended church. 240 leading U.S. journalists, 54% of them responded that they saw nothing wrong with adultery. 75% of the journalists, the 240 journalists that were interviewed, considered, considered sexual immorality acceptable. 86% seldom or never went to church. 90% believed that abortion was a woman's fundamental right. And, and there's an area. If I want to make an impact, there's an area. See, in our nation today, there is apparently a movement towards abortion being performed later and later in the pregnancy. And here's how I could make an impact. If somebody I'm working with or somebody in the family or somebody that lives next door says, hey, yeah, boy, over in New York, you get an abortion now, even maybe up to birth, that we will say, but that is wrong. Our, our nation needs to have a conscience. And the way that you instill conscience into people is by teaching them, is by being a martus, a martyr, an example that you sacrifice maybe some popularity by saying, but that's wrong. What do you mean it's wrong? Isn't it a woman's right? But how about the baby? There's a time to speak out and say, no, that's wrong. That is wrong. I remember once uh, a long time ago, my friend was involved in a, in a, a sexual pursuit that, that was immoral. And he was chatting with me about it, and, and I, I felt this great compulsion to say to him, but that's wrong. And then I finally did. And he was kind of taken aback. And you know what? He stopped doing what he was doing. You say, yeah, but I'm just one person. No, no, no. There's going to be quite a few hundred today who are going to hear this. And if, let's say, 300, 400, 500, 600 people say to somebody, that's wrong. No, 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 you don't abort a baby because you don't happen to want it at eight months into the pregnancy. That's wrong. See, we need to take a stand, and if the church not grabbing people, here's my booklet, you know, let me beat you over the head with religion, but to, to say, look, you know me, you respect me, I'm a good human being, I'm your friend, and I'm telling you, that's wrong. Have the guts, have the courage to project, not in an unloving way, not in a judgmental way, but when it comes to things which are deeply rooted in Scripture, in the moral law of God, we have to take a stand. That is a way to be a martus, a martyr, a witness. Or here's another example. We've been talking about this in the Monday and Wednesday night Bible studies. We're studying Luke. And by the way, if you, uh, we still have some time left in the year, you're welcome to come. But Monday and Wednesday night Bible study. And we're in Luke 12. And, and this man approaches Jesus and says to Jesus, Jesus, my brother has the inheritance. Mom and dad died and he's got the inheritance and he won't give me any of the money. Would you please go tell him to give me some money? Because I'm really mad. And you know what Jesus says to him? He says, what's more important, some money or your relationship with your brother? Now, I know, I know, I know. There's right and wrong when it comes to inheritance. And we have to be fair. And there are legal rights. And, 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 and we do have to take care of ourselves. Elida and I, we, you know, looking at things like investments and insurance in, in case we ever end up in one of those homes sitting in a wheelchair in the hallway. It's very expensive. 
So there is that part of life that you have to look at and you have to take seriously. At the same time, at the same time, families that are ripped apart because of money inherit. Well, she took the couch that mom had, and I'm mad, and I'm not going to talk to her. And Jesus says to you, you know what? You are not a worthy participant in the kingdom of heaven. That's what he says in Luke 12. Because the couch or the extra $10,000 or the extra this or that or the fact that some trinket that was on, on, on mom's shelf or a tool that was on dad's workshop means more to you than the relationship that you have with your brother or your sister. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus did. Check it out. It's in Luke 12. And, and, he taught, and, he, and he's got severe words. He's, he doesn't just say, you know, that wasn't very nice. He says, if you want to show that you are part of the kingdom of heaven, then you display, okay, type, impact, then you display that people and relationships are more important to you than always getting what you want. That's his, that's his message. A lot of, for example, Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Uh, Tuesday night in the women's Bible study, we're going to be studying that parable about the sheep and the goats, as long as the weather holds out. Now we hear, anyway, Lord, please. Uh, but the sheep and the goats. And in that passage, Jesus is saying, I don't necessarily want you or require you to fly to Bangladesh or to take every Friday night working with people having addictions or and, and I don't necessarily expect you to, uh, to, to quit your job and become an, an evangelist. But I do want you, I, I do want you to give some clothes to somebody that needs clothes and give some food. Oh, there's the kids' food basket thing again. I want you to give some food to people who are hungry. By the way, we've got the Taste of New Community coming up Saturday. And some of you are going to do that. We're going to come hungry and you're going to give us food. Thank you very much. But that's not what Jesus really was talking about. Had to slip in a little commercial there. See, Jesus says, sometimes you make that impact by doing little things. But doing it with a smile, doing it with love, showing that you care. Yeah. Have you ever sat by the telephone and said, you know, this person just got home from the hospital and I really should call, but maybe they're sleeping right now, so I won't. And then later on, oh, maybe it's, maybe they're having supper, so I won't. And then a week goes by and then you say, well, now it's too late. Jesus says, do it. Bring the lunch, bring the supper. Make the phone call, feed the hungry. It, little things in the, in the spirit of Jesus and love. Two pulse makes the impact. Or like swam, right? Soul with a mission. Man, when I brought Mark to the airport, <laughs> that one suitcase was too heavy because it all had all those good things in that you have sewn and made. And I ended up walking back to my car with about, with about 10 T-shirts that were made the suitcase just to, and I thought, this is great for the suitcase to be too heavy because you sewed too much. That was neat. That was really good. Bethany Christian Services. The speaker this past Wednesday at the men's luncheon was the CEO at Bethany Christian Services. And I didn't realize it, but Bethany has become nationwide and worldwide. It's in different nations. It employs hundreds and hundreds of people. And it deals with, with orphans and unwanted children and refugees. And, and you know how it started? Back in the 1940s, right here in Grand Rapids, two Dutch Christian reform women who felt sorry, who felt love for an unwed mother, and they took her in. And that's how it started? Wow. Or St. Patrick, two weeks from today is St. Patrick's Day. And uh, 
and, and a lot of people probably don't know it, but St. Patrick was a real individual. And he lived as a boy in England. And in the 400s, AD 405, he was kidnapped by some pirates. And they brought him to Ireland and they sold him as a slave to a farmer. And he worked for that farmer and then later escaped, went back to England and then felt a call to go again to the country where he was a slave, back to Ireland. And he went back to where he was a slave. And now he went to make an impact. And Patrick returned to primarily pagan Ireland. Determined to bring the gospel to people enslaved by superstition and paganism. Traveling throughout the land, he baptized thousands of new converts. He discipled new believers, trained church leaders, ordained pastors, exerted discipline on unrepentant church members, commissioned evangelists. He started scores of churches, witnessed to kings and their courts, as well as farmers and peasants. He forcefully protested against injustices that were being laid upon the common people. And by the time he died, about 461, he had started a movement of the church that transformed ancient Ireland. So I'm one person. Okay, maybe you'll impact one life. And then again, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Wow. But Colson says, it begins by understanding who I am. I am a Christian. I am a martus, a martyr. And therefore, I need to make that impact. And so I think about attitude and action and words with the people I am with. And who knows, but that a life out there could change because they watched me. The message translation of the Bible, that First Thessalonians passage, really says it well. The message translation says, do you know that all over the provinces of both Macedonia and Achaia, believers look up to you? The word has gotten around. Your lives are echoing the master's word, not only in the provinces, but all over the place. The news of your faith in God is out. We don't even have to say anything anymore. You are the message. And I'm going to leave you with that. You are the message. Would you all stand? Send us out as your witnesses because our lives, our lives, Lord, are sacrificed to make that impact on the world around us. Bless us and give us your peace. Amen. Good morning.